Hey, what's up guys, Steven here. Welcome back to another video. And Huawei is back with the P50 Pro and the P50 Pocket. Today in this video, I want to compare both smartphones. They are quite similar in terms of price, but there are much more differences than um, that the P50 Pocket just folds and the P50 Pro doesn't. So let's have a closer look, let's check them out and let's compare them side by side. So guys, there we go, we have both smartphones right over here. Here we have the P50 Pocket in white and right over here we have the P50 Pro in gold. Now both feature 256GB of ROM and 8GB of RAM, they have the same chipset, this is the white version, the gold version and the only difference on um, what you can find inside the box is basically that the P50 Pro comes with a 66W supercharger, um, it also supports 50W wireless charging while the P50 Pocket comes with a 40W supercharger which you can see right over here because this is a foldable phone, it's very thin, they couldn't probably put in such a crazy charge technology like in the P50 Pro and also um, the P50 Pocket does not support wireless charging so that are basically the main differences. Alright well there we go here we have the P50 Pro in gold and I really love that color it looks amazing it's not that yellowish kind of gold it looks really premium and yeah the design is beautiful. Then now here we have the P50 Pocket in white and guys this is really amazing just check this out if you unfold it you have such a huge screen which is actually even bigger than the P50 Pro. But when it's folded, there is something that's really cool and this is this tiny screen right over here. Now this is a 1.04 inch OLED display with 340x340 340 pixels, so 328 PPI. And um, if I unlock it, as you can see, you can do several things here inside of the display. You can start the camera to take selfies or selfie videos, which um, works here with the main camera, so you get really amazing quality. Right over here we have for instance a weather widget and you can see your notifications here, you can play music from here, you can see your notifications. So it's actually really really nice to have this kind of display right over here and with the camera together I think it looks really beautiful. Now we have a hinge right over here as you can see which says Huawei. It's quite huge but the first thing I've noticed there is literally no gap between both display parts. Now, um, if you have seen other foldable smartphones, you mostly saw that there is a gap in between because, I don't know, they didn't want to flex the display here too much or the hinge was too tight here, so they had to do a gap here, which looked not really nice and premium. But here on the P50 Pocket, it looks absolutely cool. So the design of the hinge, Huawei was always class leading in this. They did a really good job on the P50 Pocket. The display size is 6.6 .6 inches with a resolution of 1228 times 2700 pixels, so 450 ppi. That's a really crisp display. Also the color, saturation, everything on point. It's also a 120 hertz display with a 300 hertz sampling rate. So the display is really high class in the P50 Pro. Now the display of the P50 Pocket is 0.3 inches bigger. So it's a 6.9 inch display compared to the P50 Pro. It's a little bit longer as you can see, also 21 by 9 form factor with a resolution of 1188 times 2790 pixels so that's also 442 pixels per inch also really um, crisp and sharp display and for sure it also features 120 hertz so also for gaming on a foldable smartphone i tried it before with fortnite it actually was really really good now even though you can actually fold the p50 pocket and use the main camera selfie camera for video calls or something there's also a um, selfie camera inside of the display also on the p50 pro but there's a difference we have 30 megapixels f2.2 on the p50 pro and we have 10.7 f2.2 on the p50 um, pocket and let's check this out so as you can see they look really quite similar and also in terms of performance they perform very similar but if you want to get better pictures you can just simply fold the p50 pocket and use the main camera which gets you amazing looking selfies if we check the top of the frame as you can see there are some differences so the p50 pro has one speak at the top and one at the bottom the p50 pocket has all of them at the bottom we have one hole for the microphone right over here nothing else on the p50 pocket while you have two microphones on the p50 pro and also an ir blaster to use it as a remote control 
Now, what's really cool is that um, the fingerprint scan is integrated into the power button of the P50 Pocket, which makes it really convenient to unlock it when it's closed. And on the P50 Pro, we have an in-display fingerprint scanner like we know already from Huawei, which is doing the job quite good. So then here also we have um, the volume rocker also on the right side. It's a bit high up, so I can reach it easily, but if you have small hands, it's maybe you have to lower the phone a little bit. On the P50 um, Pro right over here, we have um, the button, as we know already with the red line, volume rockers, and let's check out here the bottom. And here we can see both speakers are here on the P50 Pocket down there. And on the P50 Pro, we have that one speaker, which is slightly larger as it looks like, and the SIM card slot right over here, and also microphone right over here. Now, when it comes to the camera performance, the P50 Pro is a real monster. You can also check it out on DxO Mark. It's leading in its class. So um, basically, if you're looking for the best camera on a smartphone, then it's the P50 Pro. So the main camera is 50 megapixels with f1.8, but then we also have this guy right over here, which is 64 megapixel f3.5 90 millimeter with 3.5 X optical zoom. Because it's such a huge sensor, I thought there was a mistake in the data sheet, but no, they used the 64 megapixel to actually have a 10 X lossless zoom crop, which is really, really crazy. So I'm not a big fan of zoom, to be honest, rarely use it, but if you like best in class zoom quality, the P50 Pro is doing an amazing job. So um, we also have a comeback and this is the 40 megapixel f1.6 black and white monochrome sensor. So this combined with the main camera gives you some more detailed true to life colors etc etc. And last but not least we have a 30 megapixel f2.2 30 millimeter ultra wide. So um, the P50 Pocket is a little bit different. As you can see right over here, it features only three cameras, but it also has one little highlight feature, which I actually really like. Now the P50 Pocket comes with three cameras, as you can see, but they're also pretty good. We have a main 40 megapixel shooter with f1.8, another 30 megapixel camera with f2.2 ultra wide, and another 32 megapixel f1.8 camera. And well, there's a hidden feature inside of the flash, and this is a um, UV light. Now it's not the strongest UV light, but in the dark, um, I actually had still some water cooling liquid from my PC build right over here, and it works perfectly nice. So if it's too bright, it doesn't really work good, but as soon as you dim the lights a little bit, the UV light really, really can get you some amazing pictures. So um, it's a feature everyone said, why do you need it? But I think it's a really genius feature. All right, that's about the specifications, but we now need to talk a little bit about the P50 Pocket and is there a crease or how did they manage to make it no gap at all. Now, well, if you open it up, you can see definitely a little bit that there is a slight crease, but you only see it from the side. If you look straight at the display, it looks absolutely perfect. Even from my angle like this, I don't see it. So the hinge and the system that stretches it here right over is really, really good. So as you can see the moving parts right over here, so the moving mechanism works amazingly well. Now, I didn't use it for a long time, just a couple of days. So if there will be a crease in the middle, nobody knows yet because the phone just came out. But well, I guess I have to try it long and then get you an update video. But so far, the display looks really, really good. And how stable is it really? So you can just open it up like this. As you can see, it's still very tight. I can even move it. It only moves a little bit, but it doesn't close. You really have to force to close it. And you can also throw it up like this. There is nothing breaking, nothing bending. And the build quality seems to be really good on the P50 Pocket. Well, guys, I think it's now time to talk about the most important part, and this is the software and how it feels to use. Well, um, I left the P50 Pro on the left um, pretty much stock, so just like how it looks after you um, just set it up as your first device. And on the P50 Pocket, I installed some things I used so I can show you the difference and how I've adjusted it. So let's go to the settings right over here to about the phone. Here you can see both smartphones run EMUI. So um, there is Harmon US, but it's on China only devices. So I think if you buy a, a smartphone right over here, they will all ship with EMUI 12.0.1. Now the chipset is the Snapdragon 888. So a last year's 4G SOC, um, eight gigs of RAM and both have here 256 gigabytes of um, ROM. So while um, EMUI feels pretty smooth, as you can see, so that's 
there is nothing to worry about. I also really like the animations and the different themes. So in terms of daily use, um, both smartphones feel crazy good smooth with the 888 as well. So um, let's have a closer look here on what I've done. Now on the P50 Pro, after you set it up, um, it will give you a lot of app suggestions. Like you can see right over here, all those folders full of apps. So those are just suggestions. They are not installed yet. And you can actually just um, remove those suggestions. So as you can see right over here, it tells you here to download. Many people say it's bloatware, but no, those things are not installed. They just show you that in the app gallery, you have those applications. Nevertheless, just remove those shortcuts. You can simply remove them and clean it up. And this is what I've done on the P50 Pocket already. So it just looked like this. And those are all my applications I use. So you don't need to worry that there are many things pre-installed. In fact, basically those Huawei apps are important. They are pre-installed. Um, wallet, App Gallery, the App Store, and the rest you can install yourself. Now, many people said there is no way to use Google Apps, which is partly true, not natively, but there is a nice workaround for it. And this workaround is called Cheesebase. And I'll quickly show you how I use Cheesebase to make my life much easier. Well, guys, if you need to install apps on a Huawei smartphone, I talked about this so many times already. You can use Petal Search right over here to just search for the apps. This is a search engine which is utilizing plenty of different alternative app stores, um, APK Pure, where you can push APKs to the smartphone and will also give you suggestions. So let's say we search for Netflix, which I wanted to install earlier. Then you can search it right over here and just hit the install button. This will take you to APK Pure to download it. So we already know all that, so we can just skip this. Then here we have the Huawei App Gallery, your basically number one source. If you don't find it in the App Gallery, then you try um, different alternative sources. Um, I was just installing World of Tanks, so it's increasing step by step because they have to onboard a lot of companies, a lot of app makers, but there are already many apps in there from Tinder, from local bank accounts. For instance, this is my bank I'm using. They have also this S-Identity security verification which has no problem with Huawei devices at all. If you cannot find your apps you want to use in the app gallery, if you cannot find it on the internet, if you cannot find it on Petal Search, then there is a nice workaround. This is the most amazing thing. In the app gallery, you can search for Cheesebase. Cheesebase right over here, and then just install this. Now this application basically allows you to log in with your Google account, to use Gmail, to use YouTube, to use Google Chrome, to use all kind of Google applications except of Google Pay and some things that really need native Google support. And let me show you how this works. So I've got myself the premium version of Cheesebase basically, so it's 100% ad free. That's really something I use on a daily basis, so I need that. Anyhow, um, Cheesebase allows you to go to the Google Play Store. So you will find some app suggestions first, like for instance, Facebook, so those common apps. But if you longer press on one of those applications and you go to upgrade, it takes you to the Google Play Store. Here you just hit back and you're in the Google Play Store. As you can see right over here, I'm logged in here with my um, private account. So there are no issues to log in here to Google. I can synchronize everything. I can download my applications. So this is a really nice workaround. Now, um, in order to place it on your home screen, it doesn't work with all of the applications, but with them you have downloaded, you can create a shortcut, which then shows on your home screen. This looks like this right over here. So for instance, if I want to uh, watch Twitch, I can now just press this button. It will open up Twitch and take me to the app. So this is really like native Google support, but with a workaround. You can see also right over here that there is Petal Maps, which is a really nice maps um, from Huawei. And I really like it, but also if you want to use Google Maps, I've installed Google Maps right over here, and I'm even locked in here. So even the cross login between the apps works with Cheesebase. If you're logged in into Cheesebase in the Google Play Store, you're automatically logged in into the Google applications as well and you don't need to log in again. The same goes for my emails. I'm using Gmail right over here. Just did a reset on my Fortnite account. And as you can see, this also worked perfectly nice right over here. I can synchronize my emails and yeah, Cheesebase is a perfect workaround. If you're a person like me, I'm a YouTuber, I need to use Google services. And then this is perfect because this allows me to also use YouTube with my account, also logged in here, even uploading videos 
this is really, really good. So I think that's the most important thing to talk about because I talk to many people and they say Huawei, no Google, no buy, but then I show them Cheesebase and with Cheesebase, you can even choose which Google services you want to use. You're not forced to use all of them, but still you can log into the Google Play Store and I think it's a really, really nice workaround. But what about the gaming performance because it's a Snapdragon 888? Now the gaming performance is still top notch. Well, as both smartphones have the same specifications, you can expect that the gaming performance is the same on the P50 Pro, at least that's what I've noticed. And yeah, um, the screen is absolutely stunning. So also the speakers on the P50 Pro, I would say they're even better than on the P50 Pocket, sounds really good. Now the display looks stunning, it's really sharp. The, as you can see, the sampling rate and also the refresh rate. Yeah, you definitely see that it's super smooth and yeah, um, Gaming so far is a lot of fun on both devices, but the question is how long can you play and how good is the battery? Now when it comes to battery performance, we have a 4360 mAh battery in the P50 Pro. So I've seen bigger batteries, but you need to keep in mind the P50 Pro is very, very thin. So that's actually a quite good battery. Also the camera in this one takes a lot of space. And in the P50 Pocket, we have 4000 mAh. Of course, because also very slim and it's even foldable, which also makes it kind of difficult for the battery placing. Now, I guess the battery life, I need to do more tests of it, some long-term tests, is a little bit lower on the P50 Pocket, but don't expect a huge difference. All right, guys, so we're now here at the end of this first comparison between the P50 Pocket and the P50 Pro. So far, I have to do some more tests in terms of camera performance, battery life, but stay tuned for those videos. Now, um, the P50 Pro is really an amazing smartphone. So you have seen the camera samples. They were just some quick snapshots, but I checked them on the PC and the camera performance is really out of as well it's crazy good i didn't believe it i was like yeah another p series smartphone because dxo mark really ranked it super super high and i was like okay will it be really that good but the camera performance is really good videos have also been improved so that's also amazing also built-in video editor that's everything perfectly fine so it's a really great smartphone also in terms of of battery of how it feels and the premium look and all of that but um if it comes to native google support then you have to use cheese space as a workaround so if you don't need Google it's a really good smartphone if you need Google you can use cheese base as a workaround but um, if you really want some native Google support you should look for a different smartphone nevertheless I can live with cheese base because um, this workaround is working really fine but actually I'm much more interested in the p50 pocket now this is my first foldable smartphone I will use for a longer time so I tried various foldable smartphones but I was not really happy with most of them especially with the ones that unfold into a much bigger size like a tablet size because I don't need a tablet I don't need that much screen size but this is really amazing like a normal phone you fold it without a gap so um, there is nothing that is in between and um, you have a smaller form factor to put it into your pocket now the p50 pocket is definitely an amazing smartphone and I think the design of it they did everything right on this point so um, nevertheless, all the other cons I've said about the P50 Pro, they also apply for um, the P50 Pocket because essentially it's running the same chipset and it also doesn't have Google. But other than that, both smartphones are really good. So what do you think about Huawei's latest flagships? Write a comment down below. If you use Google, if you use it on a daily basis like me, or if you don't use Google at all, I would be really interested to see your comments down below. And let's discuss a little bit about this ecosystem. All right, guys, so big thanks for watching. I'm Steven from TechMag and I'm signing out. Bye.